Hey, how's it going there, folks? Welcome back here to a Tuesday night. It is the Earth Master on this end, about 11.30 p.m. here at California time, March 19th, 2024. The latest activity shows a 1.4 up into the Alaska area, and also uh, looks like we've seen some movement down in the South Sandwich Trench as well. Fairly deep, 5.6. All right, taking a look at the uh, latest activity there across the Iceland region on the Reknes Peninsula. Uh, still seeing some eruptive vent activity out there. This is the longest uh, running eruption here of the past few across the area of the Savart Singhi region. Um, no major changes here in terms of the uh, activity. Obviously, we still have the flow of magma, uh, and that will continue. Uh, as long as the Savart Singhi area is continuing to recharge the reservoir there. It's just been a recycle uh, event going on here. And I think we're a little bit more south here towards the road uh, from this map, but the red areas are the most recent lava field, a little bit going over across the uh, Blue Lagoon area north of there. Uh, and then, of course, we've got a couple channels going down south, headed out to the ocean. I don't know if they're going to make it. Uh, it's just one of those things we're continuing to watch. And, um, again, it's, you know, it's a long duration event here. We'll see what happens by tomorrow. Really no slowdown that I can see. Um, so yeah, continuing. All right. Uh, taking a look at earthquake activity out here. There's that 5.6 down into the South Sandwich Islands area. Look at that 118 kilometers deep, pretty deep earthquake out there. Uh, so we'll watch for some surface adjustment. It's been relatively quiet out here. Occasionally we'll see some fives and sixes and some fours, but uh, it's been pretty quiet. But we got that deep earthquake right now that could trigger some uh, surface strain up there at the um, a little bit closer to the surface there where we see some of those bigger quakes. Uh, Texas area seen a handful of earthquakes as well with a 2.0. And uh, the rest of the country out here looks fairly quiet as far as the eastern portion. Uh, around Idaho, getting uh, some movement out here around Stanley, Idaho. The latest, a 3.3. Did see a little bit of elevated activity out here in the last 24 hours with uh, about six earthquakes or so between the 2 and 3 range. Uh, across the Pacific Northwest, one odd earthquake here near the uh, Sheridan, Oregon area. This is uh, about 22 kilometers deep into this area. Uh, I believe that's associated with the, Hikarang or the um, <laughs> Cascadia subduction zone. I would hope that the uh, Hikarangi subduction zone did not uh, move that quick over here. But uh, yeah, a little bit of activity there. Uh, again, that depth right there, 22 kilometers associated with this uh, mega uh, area, this subduction zone region. Small handful of earthquakes here across the uh, Mount St. Helens area. Uh, as we head into Northern California here, a little spotty. Got uh, typical activity across the Clear Lake Volcanic Field. Bay area, fairly quiet aside from some... Uh, Movement there on the creeping segment of the San Andreas Fault. Uh, Ridgecrest area still seeing a handful of earthquakes there as well, mostly ones. And as we look at Southern California, extreme Southern California here, we have one of these quakes in the uh, um, just off of the southern branch here of the San Andreas Fault on the North American side of the plate boundary. So a little bit of strain out here across this bend region and uh, a little bit of activity further south near the uh, Alcatillo area. 1.1. Nothing big going on, folks. Just uh, some small microquake activity. Uh, a look at Yellowstone National Park. See if anything uh, major is going on. Doesn't look like it. Uh, some wind events being reported right here, as you can see on some of those graphs. This activity, I don't know what it is. It could be... Uh, it's not earthquake activity because that would show up... Would Definitely would show up very closely to these nearby stations. Uh, it looks like it may have shown up here on this station, but uh, uh, kind of hard to tell. Uh, it could be geyser activity maybe being picked up by these stations here. We'll have to check back on that. But there's really no signs of any major earthquake activity or any minor earthquake activity at that. A handful of smaller quakes here uh, across the area. Uh, let's check out the Earthquakes Canada up here. Real quick, see if anything's going on to the neighbors uh, to the north here of me. And, uh, well, there's the most recent quake, it looks like, way up um, in the uh, Alaska area. 4.8 coming in. I think the USGS did pick up on that. Let me see what we got. Uh, that's that's going to be that earthquake right there from earlier uh, this morning, it looks like. 
although they're reporting it a 4.5. Uh, aside from that, really no major earthquake activity out here across the uh, Canada region. This is all older activity here across the northern edge of the Juan de Fuca plate. Uh, look at the rest of Canada. It shows fairly quiet conditions out here. Really not, uh, really not see anything major going on. No uh, major swarms up there across the oil fields. Maybe a handful of smaller quakes, but uh, nothing, uh, nothing big going on. I do like to cover Canada. Sometimes I forget because uh, it seems like they're left out for some reason. You know, as far as the USGS and the EMSC reporting their uh, reporting the quakes up here, it just they really don't report them. So I do have to check with the uh, the Canada source there to uh, get some information on it. Uh, as far as anything going on up there. Uh, Hawaii area, 2.1 coming in near the Pahala area, 3.34 uh, kilometers it looks like there for that earthquake. Really not a whole lot uh, going on there as far as any uh, volcanic activity, fairly quiet for now. Uh, 2.6 coming in it looks like into the South America area, getting some deeper quake activity once again across the Middle America Trench where we're seeing uh, looks like a five-pointer coming in here recently. Uh, of course, we did have some activity back here across the um, eastern edge here of the Caribbean plate. That's going to be uh, up here to the east. This area, I'm seeing a little bit of movement this morning with a 4.6 into the subduction zone. Uh, it does look like they did see uh, a little bit further activity up north around Puerto Rico. This is going to be the uh, newer quake activity, but for now, uh, it does look elevated here across the Caribbean plate with movement all around it. And, of course, what goes on here across this area of the plate boundary directly affects uh, the Caribbean plate. So we'll continue to watch that for some uh, further movement. Uh, New Zealand still seeing some deep activity, it looks like, underneath the North Island area. Uh, deeper activity, it looks like, followed by some surface adjustment going on there in the three range. Nothing big going on for now. And uh, look at the... Uh, Activity here across the plate boundary, fairly active, nothing major going on. Threes and fours, it looks like, are the magic numbers. And uh, aside from that, got some twos and uh, I even see a four-pointer out there around the Turkey area, it looks like. A uh, recent earthquake way up north here of Iceland. Uh, again, I still think that uh, as long as the Savart Singhi area is continuing the inflow, of magma into the reservoir there. I think we'll see a kind of a continuation of activity here uh, across the uh, area in terms of eruptive activity because it really hasn't calmed down. It's still staying fairly consistent out here with uh, the lava. All right, space weather activity here as we look at the uh, I'm trying to be quiet here because the uh, kids are sleeping. I don't want to talk too close to the microphone, but hopefully you guys can hear me okay. Um, solar activity is definitely popping uh, in terms of the potential uptick here. We got quite a few regions coming in here from the eastern limb, 3614, 3615. A couple newer areas behind that as well. A look at the magnetogram shows this area, the newer region, uh, quite complex. Also this area as well, notice the intermixing of the colors, indicating a complex uh, sunspot. Uh, this area up here, old 3590, it's a big sunspot, it, but it's uh, there's really not a, a whole lot of development going on with that, uh, that region here, but uh, we'll continue to watch it. Also another area back behind that one. So we are looking at some elevated activity in terms of the space weather flare potential. Looking at a 99% chance for a C flare, M flare at 40, X flare around 5% chance or so. And, uh, you know, just kind of crackling with some C flares here recently. We did see a little low grade M flare, but uh, all this poppiness here, this little static on the graph indicative of some, um, well, some solar flare activity, a little bit of uptick going on. As uh, far as the auroras go, I, you know, we're, we're supposed to see some um, tonight, I think. Let me see here what the detailed forecast says. March 20th at 1824. Okay, so that's going to be a little bit later uh, on Wednesday. Wednesday night, so technically my tomorrow night. 
Maybe you're tonight, depending on where you're at. Don't want to confuse too many people out there, but yeah. Wednesday night, it looks like we may see a little bit of uh, elevated storming conditions in terms of the auroras. Not expecting much. This is just barely a glancing blow from a, a really weak CME here a couple days ago. Uh, Storm Prediction Center here, not a whole lot of severe weather. Uh, just general thunderstorm activity here over the next couple days or so. Uh, a look at the numerical models in terms of forecasting. i got some uh, cooler air coming down here across the northeast. That will continue for a little bit, bringing some snow with it. A little taste of winter coming back here. Uh, quite a bit of rain stirring up there in the Gulf of Mexico, uh, hitting Florida here pretty soon as we head towards the end of the week. Here's our next storm system knocking on the door across the west coast. Not a big one, but it is a, a decent low pressure system. And that will spell some trouble here potentially uh, later next week for some severe weather activity. So we'll have to watch that across the southern plains. And uh, it does look like it's going to stay unsettled out there across California for a little bit. Uh, just a very active. It seems like it's very active spring so far out here. And of course that could spell some, uh, you know, severe weather troubles uh, across the uh, rest of the country so we'll continue to watch that we're getting pretty close here to the april 8th time frame and that's when the uh well the total eclipse is going to happen out here we'll cover that definitely more in detail as we get closer we'll take a look at cloud cover pos uh, possibilities and uh, maybe where the best place to uh, see the total eclipse will be pending uh you know pending the weather cooperates here all right, guys, I'm out of here. I think it's way past my bedtime. Have a good night, and um, we'll catch you guys back here tomorrow. I don't see anything major going on right now. No unusual swarms, no unusual activity. All right, folks, have a good night. We'll catch you guys back out here a little bit later.